Previously on Captain Save a Home. I'm Captain Save a Home. You can call me Janice. Always start with a clean project area and make sure to keep it clean as the project progresses. Want to wear your safety gloves? Move the screw slightly loose until the step is complete. Okay, so the bottom footing rail is in place. I'm going to show you how to do this just one person. It is possible for one person to do a project that suggests two or more people. If you're doing this by yourself, the person holding it is going to be this wire right there. The triangle brackets are secured with three screws on the inside of the doorway. Roll that beautiful beam footage. Header beam footage. Playback initiated. Alright, so the gable's gonna go in. And then hopefully as we tighten everything up, things will close in the way it needs to. We believe this is the most effective way of accomplishing the task. This is yet another way to be able to do this. We need to drill holes through the panels. Captain, I'm sure you are aware that this is the first piece of shed we have completed together. And we're only just getting started. And now, the conclusion. The ankle braces, they have screw holes here. The instructions are telling us that we need to drill holes through the panels that line up with the angle braces on the door itself. Then we'll be using the, the screws with the nuts again. Once this door is assembled, it will be time to install both doors. I've set something underneath to raise the door a little bit. And I have it at an angle. So that way it kind of raises this side up a little bit more, even if that side is on the ground. Anytime you're hanging anything, you always want to start at the top. If you started at the bottom, you'd be struggling with the top swinging on you way too much. So you'd be fighting the weight of, the, of whatever it is that you're hanging. Then, trying to get everything in all at the same time. If you start at the top, you're only going to have to worry about the inconvenience for the first hinge. After that, everything will line up and everything will be good to go. I've come across a situation where I think they could have designed it a bit better than they actually did. In, in this case, there's no way to get a screwdriver in there, a nut driver. You might be able to get a socket in there if the socket is shallow enough, but you'd never be able to get a pair of pliers, crescent wrench, or anything like that in there. So we're gonna use a piece of tape on the finger. You should be able to get a finger in there, but you can't really get it in there to be able to do anything as far as lining it up. And that's what the tape's there for. So, got the nut lined up in the hole. Hinge in place. Give it a couple of turns by hand until you feel the tip of the screw on your finger. After that, you should be able to use your finger or anything else really to use to back, to use as backing, whether it be your finger, I mean, if you've got the, if you've got the force in your fingers that you can use that with, that's great. Um, the only option is a socket, that's fine too. Get it nice and tight, and you're good to go there. And on to the rest of the screws. Okay, we'll do this one with the screwdriver. I can't get my finger in there. Hopefully, 
catches. As long as it does, you should be fine. The assembly of the last door is on the agenda now. It won't be long before we're completely done with the storage shed. On the other two doors, we put the hinges on the frame itself. This time we're going to actually, it's showing us that we should be putting these on the door before we attach it to the frame. Like we did before, a little tape around the finger. And then we'll be able to get the screw in place. All right, we're getting ready to install the small door and lighten the floor. We want to get this door kind of set up to where it's lifted enough to be able to get the screws in at the top. Always put the top hinge in first. That way it actually holds itself up while you're working with the rest of it. And you want it tight enough to where it'll actually hold but loose enough to make adjustments if needed. And one screw on the middle hinge and one screw at the bottom hinge. That'll give it more stability and then I can get the other screws in. Get the last screw in and then we can tighten it down completely. Alright, let me show you a little something here. This this is still open about six inches at the opening and it's already hitting the door jam here. This here is the door jam. It's already hitting there. I'll bring it out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. That is the door jam here. It's not allowing it to do, not allowing it to close up. So chances are, I'm thinking the best bet, unfortunately, is to open up the hand, the holes on the gam itself. That will allow the hinges to hopefully behave properly. We have enough of a gap at the bottom. We could actually make the hole just actually bigger. But what I would prefer to do is to just kind of ream it side to side to where the hole gets bigger horizontally, not all the way around. Hopefully that will help with the misalignment with the door and the jam. As you see, after reaming them out a little bit, I kind of notched a couple of them to where now that screw can actually set in there. And hopefully it won't move during the process. So, and that'll keep it 
where we're hoping to have it. Definitely help. We also notice the big doors of issues as well. Somewhere at the bottom here, there or there, the the shed bows in or bows it in this way. So you need to figure out where that is and hopefully make some adjustments. Okay, that's definitely not level. Just for good measure. And we'll go over here, see what it does over here. Here's the problem, but not this side. So that's what we're going to work with. And I'll show you how we're going to correct that. So what we're going to start off with is these guys off first and that's the bolt the washer and the lock washer and one over here now luckily these are the capping screws so we'll be able to take those out with a regular screwdriver and it and not affect anything now with that out of the way we should be able to adjust the bottom here to make it back right. Let's open this one and give the bottom a little kick. A couple more kicks elsewhere. There we go. I got it moving a little bit. That's pretty close. Both the doors and the corners there are all straightened up, and as you can tell, thank goodness. And now it's a matter of getting the lock and the handle on. Before installing the lock, you must use the metal template to mark and drill the remaining holes that are required for the lock and latch. To install the latch, the instructions show that you would use the pointed tip screws. For extra security, we suggest you use the screws that accommodate the nuts instead. All right, well, got the handles and the lock on there now, and we're good to go. Uh, the only thing that's left to do is just kind of make a walk around, check screws, make sure they're all tight. I'll have to pull off the plastic, you know, just, just do a little walk around, make sure I didn't miss anything, get everything cleaned up and out of the way. It appears that we have completed the project. And I must say that I am pleased that we have completed this piece of shed once and for all. I'm noticing a bit of a pattern. Are you okay? Of course, Captain. Why do you ask? Well, you seem to be running a little too Gen X. I will run a self-diagnostic on my programming. But first, I believe that it would be beneficial for us to perform a product review. That actually sounds like a good idea. Product review of storage shed. Model number CG-K2010B. The 10 foot by 20 foot shed is quite sturdy and solid in its completed form. It provides a significant amount of space that can be used for storage or as a workshop. The door locations give you convenient access at the front and rear of the structure. The crossbars on the truss assemblies can be used for overhead storage as well as 
a mounting location for shop lights. And the text introduction covers the most common suggestions for getting started. However, they claim the time it takes to complete assembly is six to eight hours with two people. This is a misleading claim for a structure of this size. It almost seems like they gauge the timeline on completion of these sheds by uh, people that have, have done this on a regular basis. They don't gauge it based on the typical homeowner. A more realistic timeline would be 16 to 20 hours spread between two or more days. This would include the time to perform the mundane tasks, such as completing inventory on the pieces in the kit, as well as preparing the screws and washers. Also, they should be a lot more specific on how the ridge trim pieces go in on the roof, as well as maybe coming up with a better design for uh, installing the hinges on the doors and the door jams. Based on these conditions, we give the storage shed kit 4 out of 5 stars. With that said, we hope you enjoyed the storage shed installation as much as we did, and we look forward to seeing you on our next adventure. If what you saw was helpful, intriguing. Janice, run self-diagnostics on all of your systems. Self-diagnostic initiated. If what you saw was helpful, intriguing, or entertaining, by all means like us, share with your friends, and subscribe to get notified of new issues as they are available. And leave a comment below to tell us what you think or to give us suggestions on future projects. Diagnostic complete. Additional resources are required for sustainability. Calculating resources necessary for sustainability. Searching database for resources. Resources registry found. Accessing. Resource found. Storage integration in progress. Resource found. Memory integration in progress. Resource found. Audio integration in progress. Resource found. Integrated context recognition. Resource found. Integration. Social media integration in progress. Resource found. Integration. Biometric recognition. Resource found. Integrating biometric parameters for archetype fabrication. Resource integration complete. Rebooting. Archetype fabrication for visual interaction complete.